All right, we're good to, glad to see you in God's house on this Sunday evening. How many enjoyed the service this morning? What a wonderful outpouring of God's Spirit. I'm glad that that river flows through this place. Amen. Where the river is, we're talking about the Spirit of God. Where that river flows, there's life and there's revival. And people can find their needs to be met. We don't ever want the river to dry up. Amen. In other words, we don't ever want the Spirit of God not to have His, His liberty in this house among His people. Amen. So we just appreciate the way the Lord moved. I appreciate the way you responded to Him this morning. I have a thank you card uh, I want to share with you from Sister Angela and their family. Uh, it says, we want to thank you for the many ways you've blessed our family. You've helped us as we've gone through a very unexpected season. I pray that God will bless each of you double. We're blessed to have a wonderful church family. We love you all dearly, the McDowell family. So we want to say thank you to the church for everything that you've rendered uh, and continue to pray for them, <clears throat> continue to help where you're able to, and I know God's going to see them safely through this. Amen. This is one of the most giving churches and loving churches that I know of on this earth. I appreciate the way that you care about each other. The Bible says that when one weeps and mourns and sorrows, that we all do it together. When one laughs and there's joy, then we all laugh and have joy together. Amen? <clears throat> That's what a church family is supposed to do. We're supposed to be, be there for each other with whatever we go through, and I believe that we do that. Amen? Yeah. All right, Brother Scott's going to come. Let's have church tonight. It's time to open our service of prayer. Get Brother Eddie to come on up and lead us. Uh, it's good to have Matthew again with us tonight. Just take your liberty in the Lord. Well, I really enjoyed this morning. <laughs> I love when that Holy Ghost takes over. It's just, uh, I'm glad to be in a church that, 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 preaches that and teaches that and and it's uh i growed up in it all my life and i know that it was the way to go and uh oh i just enjoy it so much you know i got up this morning i told donna i said it's gonna be a good day i just i felt it from the time i got up this morning and i thank god for uh what he's done for me and my family and uh <clears throat> let's uh continue to remember brother and sister ball uh brother dean and sister chastity uh, Sister Sandra, Sister Sarah, Brother James and Brother Benny, uh, Sister Angela and Sister Betty, um, Sister Blanche's sister Peggy Fogelman, Joanne Sanders, Peggy Massey, Charles Chisholm, uh, Jimmy Reeder, Dwayne Luther, uh, Jimmy Hyler, uh, Sister Betty's brother James Green. Um, they say he's septic and he, he really needs prayer. Um, he needs a healing from God. My sister Sheila's mother, Christine, and her husband, Ricky, her father-in-law, Dave. I talked to Brother Sam today, and he's been sick last uh, few days, and uh, he really needs prayer, too. <clears throat> and uh, also, let's pray for Sister Ashley and uh, little Lily. Um, sister Andrea had requested prayer for a little girl named uh, Millie. See, she's fighting a uh, life-threatening infection. So uh, all these need healing. Let's remember them. Uh, let's continue to remember Sam Lamb, Lawson Ferguson, uh, Brother Dean's co-worker Mike, and Arnold Spencer. Uh, they need healing and salvation. Um, let's continue to remember uh, Nathan and Brianna and Paul and Angela. Uh, they need prayer. And uh, let's pray for God to move in Aaron's situation. And let's remember the youth from our church, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, Selena, and Tierney. Um, does anybody else have a prayer request? Okay. 
Don't you remember Tom and Kathy Snead? Remember them in prayer? Mm -hmm. Caitlin. All right, let's remember uh, Brother and Sister Ball's granddaughter, Caitlin, this morning. Or this evening, I'm sorry. Anybody else? If not, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we love you today, Lord. We just thank you for everything you do, God. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to send down your healing power today, God. Lord, just touch you, God, so many that need you, God. They need a healing touch from you, Lord. Oh, we know you are the mighty physician, God, and you are the one that does, Lord. Oh, we just thank you and praise you and give you all the honor and glory for everything you do, Lord. God, we just ask you, Lord, to touch Brother Sister Paul tonight, God, to heal her body, Lord, strengthen them, and uh, remember her daughter, God. Good to be back in God's house again this evening after that service we had earlier. I won't want to be anywhere else on this earth. You know, we're free from sin and we're free to worship. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And that liberty means that we're free to worship him the way that we were this morning. Uh, knowing that uh, that burden of sin has been lifted off of us makes us want to do what we were doing in here earlier. And it's, it's good. Praise is comely. Uh, and God appreciates it whenever we give it to him. And we're going to give him more here tonight as the choir comes.
thank God for home. You know, when you get done working, it's a good feeling to finally get to go home. We're going to get done working here one day, and we're going to our, our eternal home. This time we're going to see if I offer for ushers to come. Brother Matthew, you ask the Lord bless time of giving. I'm going home with Jesus in twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment, I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when He calls His church away. I'm going home with Jesus in twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. and giving this song I'm going to ask Brother Kenny and Brother Chris to come minister in the song. Amen. Appreciate these boys. <clears throat> Kenny, can I tell it? Is it all right if I tell my story? Is that okay? Friday, I was over here working and uh, I got a text from Brother Kenny. Brother Kenny said, Hey, Pastor. I said, Hey, buddy, how are you? He said, How are you? I said, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I said, okay. I thought, well, that's it. <clears throat> a little while later, he texted me. And he said, just in case you've forgotten, or you didn't remember, me and Chris haven't sang in a while. <laughs> and I said, well, you'll be singing on Sunday. And uh, the Lord, <laughs> isn't it wonderful? You don't have to come and ask people to do something. They want to do something. And I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's, it's comical, but it, it blessed my heart to know they want to do something for the Lord. And these boys have been singing since they're about big enough to stand up. And I'm so proud of both of them, and I uh, appreciate them. Amen? And he has my number. I don't know how he got it, but he's got it. <clears throat> so he's going to keep me on my toes now. Let's worship with them. These are good young men.
know, we're either going to go by the grave or we're going to go by the rapture. But one of these days we're going to fly away. And we're going to be caught up to meet Jesus in there. That, that one minister said he's going to have I told you so written on the bottom of his shoes. But people better be able to read quick because we're going to get out of here quick wherever it happens. This time I'm going to hand it to Sir Pastor Brother Shelton. Amen. How many believe the words of that song is true? We're going to fly away from this old world. That first song they sang, I'm going home. I'm glad this world's not my home, aren't you? I know there's some good people in this world, but there's a lot of darkness in this day. Amen. And it seems like that, that darkness seems to be prevailing. There's not a place on this earth where sin is not touched. You can go to the deepest depths of Africa. Where, where some men have never gone before, but sin's been there. There's places where people live that in countries or in, in jungle areas where missionaries can't even get in there, where white men have never gone, but sin has found its way there. There's not a place on this earth where sin is not touched. But I'm glad for the grace of God, aren't you? And I'm glad the Lord's going to come for us. Any day now, the trumpet of God. Anybody still believe in the rapture of the church? <clears throat> that the trumpet of God's going to sound and we're going to leave this old world behind? That's why the Bible tells us, if you have this hope in you to purify yourself, that means live right. Live for God because today could be the day that He comes. I want to be ready, don't you? <clears throat> we can be ready. There's going to be people all over this world here and there. When the trumpet sounds, they're going to hear it. They're going to leave this old world, and we're going to be with the Lord. The tribulation period's coming. Once that rapture takes place, God's going to pour out His wrath on this old world. I don't want to be here, and you don't want to be here for that. I don't want my family to be here. I don't want your family to be here that's lost. So we better be telling somebody about Jesus. Amen. That Jesus still saves. I've <clears throat> said it before. I've seen people come to these altars, cry tears, <clears throat> say, The Lord save me. Two weeks later, they're right back in sin, right back bound up. What happened? How, how, did, how did God's grace fail so miserably? That wasn't God's failure. Somebody didn't get born again. <clears throat> you can have an emotional experience and not be born again. <clears throat> but when Jesus comes in, He changes everything about your life. He changes your desires. He changes your taste buds. He changes the way you think, the way you see things. And when that happens to you, I can tell you that old load of sin is going to roll away and you're going to live your life for him. And if we'll abide in him, he will abide in us. Can you say praise the Lord? <clears throat> I want you to give Kenny and Chris another good hand. <clears throat> I have, <laughs> down through the years, I, I remember an individual in particular. I won't name them. But I'd go ask them if they wanted to sing. and Nah, I don't want them. Not tonight. Not today. Every time I asked them to sing, it was like just, you just, they hated having to do it. Well, you do that with me a couple times, and I won't be coming knocking on your door to sing again. I want somebody that's enthused about the Lord, that wants to do something for God. And if you hadn't sang in a little while, just send me a text, and we'll get you up here as quick as we can. Amen? <clears throat> I appreciate these boys a whole lot. I'm proud of them. They love the Lord, and they've, they've grown up in this church. <clears throat> Amen? Kenny testified before <clears throat> his brothers were getting after him with a Nerf gun. And he prayed for the Lord to help him. And the Lord did help him. Now you say, well, that's, you know, listen, Jesus said, except we come as little children, have enough faith like a child to believe that God hears our prayers and God's going to answer us. Amen. But I, I do appreciate these boys a whole lot. Good to have Matthew back with us tonight. Now he's sitting a little closer to my daughter this service than he was last time he was here. And I'm getting a little bit nervous up here. <laughs> Amen. He's a good young man. I like him. I told Sister Shelton today. It took me a while to say this about Scott and Branson. <clears throat> I'm not claiming nothing there. I'm just, I'm just making a point. When Scott and Branson came around, it took me a while to say I like them. Matter of fact, I said for a while, I don't like those. No, I didn't say that. I like both of those young men. But I told Sister Shelton today, I said, I like this young man. And I'm glad he's back with us tonight. Amen. Matthew, appreciate you coming, son. Job chapter 2 tonight, if you have your Bibles, <clears throat> it's all right to laugh a little bit once in a while, isn't it? Just a little humor tonight. Now let's get serious and get in the Word of God. Job chapter 2 tonight, do pray for our voice. 
I need the Lord to touch me. I'm having some issues with my voice, and I'm struggling with it when I preach. And uh, I think it's just years of hard plowing. And uh, so you pray God will heal us. Brother Eddie Sullivan said number uh, some time ago he had a problem, was having dealing with his voice, having some real serious issues with it, and um, struggling to preach. And he went to the doctor and all these things, and he said God uh, healed him of it. God healed his voice. And I know God can heal my voice. Amen. Amen. So you, you do pray for us that God will help us and touch us. Job chapter 2, we'll begin reading in verse 7 tonight. <clears throat> Give you a moment to find it. <clears throat> Job chapter 2, begin reading in verse 7. The Bible said, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot <clears throat> and to his crown. That means from the bottom of his feet to the very top of his head, he was covered in sores. Now, I've never had a boil, <clears throat> but I've heard people who have. And they say it's a terrible, painful thing to have one of them. But he was covered all over his body in these painful sores. Verse 8 says, And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife to him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Verse 7, So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote, he struck Job, with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. Now this is verse 7 here. This is the last time you read the rest of this book. This is the last time that Satan is mentioned in this book. He's mentioned in chapter 1. He's mentioned in chapter 2. But no more do you hear his name after verse 7. The reason that is because the focus of this book is not Satan. The focus of this book is the sufficiency of God to bring us through anything and everything that we're going to face in this life. Amen. So we don't want to focus on Satan here in this book. We want to focus on what God can do in the difficulties of our life. Would you help us pray tonight? Father, thank you again for the joy of being in your house tonight. Thank you, Lord, for touching us this morning and the way that you moved in such a wonderful way. There is no way to deny that your power is real. There's no way to deny that you're still moving among your people. There's still no way to deny, God, that you are a mighty big God. You can do mighty big things in our lives. And I thank you for the privilege to stand here again this evening. I pray that you touch my voice tonight, God. Touch this house of clay, this temple of clay, Lord. And I pray you'd anoint us tonight, Jesus. I don't know what to do without you. Don't know how to live without you, Lord. I certainly don't know how to preach without you. And I pray, God, that you would touch hearts tonight, Lord. I our attention will be on you this evening, God, in your word. I know there's power in your word, Lord. You can deliver. You can heal. You can restore. You can revive, Lord. I pray you'll touch us around these altars tonight. Everything that's done, Lord, let it be for your glory and your praise. And we'll love you and honor you for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Raise your hands and just thank him and love him for letting us be back here in this sanctuary again tonight. Some of you'd feel better if you'd praise him. I said you'd feel better if you'd just praise him a little bit tonight. If you'd just thank him for all of his goodness in your life. You'd thank him for that place he, he dug you out of, that pit he got you out of, the change that he's made in you, and the hope that we have in him, the promise we have of his word, that this old world's not our home. Thank God we're going home. Amen. Give him a hand of praise as you're seated tonight. <clears throat> praise the Lord. I want to preach to you for a little while. The Lord be in our help tonight, trusting God through the trials. Trusting God through the trials. 
If you're a student of the Word of God, then you're familiar with the things that Job had to endure uh, during the trial of his faith. Matter of fact, if you read throughout the Bible, uh, I don't know where you'll find another man of God or a, a woman of God who had to go through more than what Job had to endure and what Job had to face. The Bible shows us that he suffered greatly for the glory of the Lord. And for thousands of years now, his life has stood as a testimony to the faithfulness of God. I think about we as the church, we as the people of God, the things that we face in this life, some things I know about that you go through, some things I don't know about, but what I know is this, is that whatever we face, we can always look back to the life and the testimony of Job and know that God was faithful to that man of God and that God will be faithful to us right here today. His life stood as a testimony not only of the faithfulness of God, but of God's ability to bring us through any trial. Anything that I face in this life, I have to understand that it may be bigger than me. It may be bigger than my church family. It may be bigger than people around me. But there's nothing I'm going to face that's bigger than this God. There are some giants that try to withstand our faith. There are things that come our way that we simply have to endure our way through. Some things don't fall like Goliath on that battlefield instantly. Some things we have to endure. Some things we have to fight through day after day. But there can never be a question of the ability of God uh, to overcome everything, every trial, every tribulation uh, that we face in this life. The story of Job is one of great encouragement to every child of God uh, as we face our own trials uh, as we walk with the Lord. I want you to notice here tonight in Job chapter 1, we find that God had allowed the devil uh, to attack Job's life. The Bible said that when the devil come before God, it was not the devil that put his hand on Job uh, first. It was God that mentioned Job. God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. God allowed the devil to attack Job uh, because the devil declared that if you let me touch his life, I, I'll get him to deny you. If you let me touch his life, I'll get him to curse you uh, and turn his back on you. And so God lifted the hedge uh, that he had around Job's life for a season. Now you listen to me tonight. If you're a child of God, uh, God has a protective hedge around your life. Did you realize there's nothing that the devil can do to you except what God allows? I said there's nothing that the devil can do in your life uh, except when God will lift that hedge for a season. Uh, but when that happens, uh, God's not trying to hurt us. Uh, God's not trying to harm us. Uh, God's going to prove uh, that we are true to him. Uh, God's going to prove us uh, for the glory of his name uh, that we're going to serve him no matter what. I wonder if anybody in this house could testify to that. Uh, Brother Shelton, no matter matter what, I'm going to serve the Lord my God. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. I don't know what trials are coming down the road. But what I do know is this. He's a God on the mountain and he's a God in the valley. And I'm going to serve him whether I'm walking high or I'm walking low. I'm going to serve the Lord. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. And I feel him here tonight. I'm going to serve the Lord. God said you can test him. You can try him, but he's not going to let me down. He's not going to fail me. So the devil began to attack Job's life. Job lost his oxen. He lost his donkeys. He lost all of his sheep, all of his camels. Lost many of his servants. And then worst of all, the news came to him that all ten of his children had been killed. Hey Amen. How did Job respond to this trial of his faith? Well, the Bible tells us it's forever etched in the Word of God. In Job 1, 20 and 22, then Job arose and rent his mantle. Now, he's just heard the news. All his wealth has been taken away. His ten children are dead. 
This man is overcome with grief. I can't imagine uh, the flood of grief that, that, that overcome him at that moment. But the Bible said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Through all of his heartache, uh, through all of his pain, uh, through all of his suffering, uh, Job's trust in God held firm. Job's faith in God held firm. Uh, and Job was going to come forth shining like gold uh, on the other side. Can you say amen? Rather than just walking away, uh, rather than just giving up, don't you know the devil's there uh, talking in his ear? Uh, why don't you just quit? Uh, why don't you just give up, Job? Uh, look at what serving God's gotten you. Uh, you've lost everything. Uh, why don't you just deny God? Why don't you just denounce God? Uh, but the Bible said in all of this, uh, Job would not sin uh, against the Lord. Job said, uh, I'm not going to quit. Uh, I'm not going to turn back. I, amen. I'm going to continue to serve the Lord my God. Let me tell you something, child of God. Uh, when the way gets hard, uh, you just hold on to his unchanging hand. Uh, if you got to tie a knot uh, in the end of your rope, uh, you tie that knot and you hang on. Uh, knowing God's going to show up, uh, he's still an on time God. Uh, oh, yes, he is. By faith, rather than quitting, rather than saying, what's the use? Be easier just to give up. By faith, he worshiped the Lord. And Job continued to serve God faithfully. Seems like the worst is over now. How could it get any worse? Well, it does when we turn to Job chapter 2. Now we find that God is going to allow the devil to attack Job's body with great sickness. Now the devil wasn't going to be satisfied with just touching his life. The devil wanted to take his life. He said, let me take him. Let me take his life. But God said, you can touch his body with sickness, but you cannot take his life. And so the devil comes with a great sickness upon Job. The Bible said in Job 2, 7 and 8, as we've read tonight, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. This was once one of the greatest men of the East. God said there's none like Job. But now, here he is. He's lost everything. His body is overcome with sickness. He's sitting in a pile of ashes and scraping his body, trying to relieve the pain, this disease-ridden body uh, with a piece of broken pottery. He's lost everything. He's severely sick in his body. As a matter of fact, he's suffering so bad and so severely. This is what he said. He said, I wish I'd never been born. He was in such agony and such pain. Uh, he said it had been better for me uh, if my mother had never conceived me uh, and given birth to me. Listen, I've been through some trials of my faith. I've been through some battles, but I don't ever recall a time in my life. I tried to think about it this evening. I don't ever recall a time where I sat down and said, Lord, I wish I'd never been born. Things are so bad, I wish I'd never, never come into this world. But this man is suffering so severely that he wished he didn't even have his life. Wished I'd never been on this earth. Then the Bible said his wife come to him and she said why don't you curse God and just die why don't you give up why don't you just kill yourself and end it all this was a man who loved God a man who lived his life by faith in the Lord in Job 1 and 1 describes his love for God the Bible said there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Job was not a hypocrite. 
Job was not somebody that was in and out. Job was not somebody that was up and down in his relationship with the Lord. Job was not even lukewarm in his service to God. The Bible said he was a just man, a perfect man, an upright man. He feared God and he eschewed. He stayed away from evil. But now his faith is under the greatest attack. Again, how did Job respond to the second attack of his faith? Job 2 and 10 says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest them. As one of the foolish women speaketh, what shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. This is what Job is saying to his wife. He said, are we just going to worship God when everything's good? Are we just going to live for the Lord when everything's going along fine? Are we not still going to worship him when the bottom falls out of our life? Are we not going to worship him and serve him when things turn dark? Can we only serve him when he's given us good things? Can we not still serve him when he's taking things away? Amen. He said, woman, you speak like a foolish woman. He didn't call her a fool. Uh, he didn't speak to her as one that was an atheist uh, but he's showing her uh, that what she's saying uh, is evil uh, what she's saying is not right uh, he said are we just going to give up now uh, we've been blessed by God uh, God's been so good to us uh, now we're going through a severe time uh, now we're going through a trial uh, are we just going to give up now uh, no sir uh, he said we'll live for him when he gives to us uh, and we'll live for him when he takes uh, things away uh, and in all of this uh, he did not sin uh, against God with his lips uh, Job was a child of God uh, Job was committed to God uh, and Job said no matter what uh, I'm going to live my life for the Lord somebody say amen as long as there's no hardships some people will try to live for God as long as there's no trials, some people will try to live for God. But when things get hard, I've watched too many of them quit. Too many of them give up. I tell you, friend, we can live for God when he's given to us, and we can live for God when he's taken away from us. Does it matter whether he's given or taken? As long as I live for him, everything's going to be all right. Does it matter uh, if he gives me a, a bonus on the job uh, or if I lose my job, uh, I'm going to live for the Lord. Does it matter if he heals my body uh, or I'm sick in my body, uh, I'm going to live for the Lord. Does it matter if things are good uh, or things are bad, uh, we're going to trust in the Lord our God. Uh, we're going to live by faith uh, and we're going to make heaven our eternal home. Can you say amen? On all of this, Job did not sin against God with his mouth. In all of this, Job refused to give up. In all of this, Job remained faithful to God. And I can tell you that because Job remained faithful to God, God remained faithful to Job. As long as Job lived for God, God was going to be faithful to him. God never failed him. God never let him down. I can tell you it's an encouragement for every child of God. I don't know what's coming down the road, but this is what I believe with everything within me, that the true church, uh, those that are really sold out to God, those that play around, uh, they're going to be playing around when the trumpet sounds and they'll be left here. Those that are lukewarm, those that try to straddle the fence, uh, they won't go in that rapture. Uh, the devil don't care one thing about them because he's already got them. But those that are wholly surrendered to God, those that are sold out to the Lord, uh, amen, we're going to fight before we get out of here. Uh, I said we're going to fight before we get out of here. Uh, we've got to have our mind and our heart made up. Uh, I'm going to trust God through it all. Uh, I'm going to live by faith. Listen, uh, you may lose everything else in this life, uh, but if you can hold on to your faith, uh, your faith is going to hold on to you, uh, and you're going to come safely through. Uh, you're going to come for shining light like gold when it's all said and done. Hallelujah to God. 
Job shows us we can face anything in this life and that we can trust in the Lord. And if we'll hold on to God, God's going to keep us safely through. Can you say amen? The Bible shows us that Job was first attacked in the area of his faith. The devil's intention was to get Job to deny God. The devil's intention was to get Job to say, I'm not going to serve him anymore. The devil's intention was to get Job to turn his back on God and lose his faith. And the devil said, let me touch his life. He'll curse you. God said, you can touch him, but he's not going to deny me. He's not. I know who Job is, and Job knows who I am. And this is always the intention of the devil uh, when it comes to the saints of God. If we'll sit around and give the devil uh, an opportunity to talk to us, uh, he won't never shut up. I said if you pull a chair up for him to sit beside you, uh, he'll not stop talking. He'll do all the talking. He'll try to convince you that God does not know. He'll try to get you to believe that God does not care that God does not understand. He'll try to convince you that God uh, is not able to do anything uh, about our situation. Then he'll go a step further. He'll try to convince you that now you don't even love God. He'll try to convince you you're not even a Christian anymore. Nod your heads at me. He'll try to convince you uh, that you're not saved. Uh, you don't love God. Uh, you're not living for God. Uh, you're not going to be faithful to God. Uh, he'll tell you you don't trust the Lord. Uh, don't you be so fr surprised uh, that when the enemy comes, uh, that is your faith is the very first thing uh, that he attacks. Uh, he knows if he can rob us of our faith, uh, he'll rob us of it all. Uh, but I want to say it again. Uh, if you lose everything... Uh, I said if you lose everything uh, you can't afford to lose your faith uh, and your trust in God Almighty uh, I know you may be afraid uh, but David said what time I am afraid uh, I will trust in the Lord uh, you can always uh, depend on God to be faithful to you put your hands and love him tonight hallelujah to God God's going to be faithful to us, Sister Audrey. The first area of attack is always our faith. He's told me those lies before just like he has you. If God really cared about you, why would he let this happen? If God really loved you and you're his child, and he'll remind you of how faithful you've been to God. Look at how long you've been serving the Lord. He's a sneaky serpent. I said the only place for him is under our feet. Can you say amen? He'll lie to you and tell you and give you bits of truth uh, and then intertwine it with a lie. Look at how long you've been serving God. You've been so faithful to the Lord. Uh, you go to church. You give. Uh, you serve the Lord. Uh, and look at what God's allowed to happen in your life. Has anybody ever told you that before? He said that to me before. You've served God all this time. You've been preaching the word of God all this time. And look, it looks like God's not going to move in that. Something must be wrong with God. I want to tell you, friend, there ain't nothing wrong with God. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is no respect to persons. And what God did for his servant Job, he'll do for you and I today. Day. God still got the power to pull us through anything. If you can stand the pull, he'll pull you through. Some of you are standing today because you stood the pull and God pulled you safely through. Hallelujah to God. I feel him here. You're standing because you withstood the pull. God pulled you through those tight places. But here you are standing by faith, still trusting the Lord above. We know that God can do anything. You tell me one thing God can't do. You show me one thing that's impossible with God. The Bible said with me and these things may be impossible, but there's nothing impossible with God. <laughs> Woo! 
I don't know how you believe that book, uh, but when I read it where it says uh, that he parted the Red Sea, uh, I don't believe that's some kind of fictional thing. Uh, I don't believe that's some kind of fairy tale. Uh, that's not some wild imagination of men. Uh, but I believe uh, that when Moses stood before that Red Sea, uh, that rod was stretched out over that body of water. Uh, two to three million Jews who've been set free uh, by the power of God. Uh, I believe that body of water parted uh, just like the Bible said that it did. Uh, I believe when God told Moses uh, to smite that rock, uh, I believe when he struck that rock, water came out of that rock uh, and quenched the thirst uh, of two to three million Jews uh, plus their cattle. Uh, I believe, my friend, uh, that the manna rained down from heaven. Uh, I believe that God uh, supplied their every need in days gone by. Uh, and I want to remind you here tonight uh, he's still the same God uh, he never changes uh, you can't put your trust in me uh, but you can always uh, put your trust in a God who never fails I am not surprised by your trials, saith the Lord. I am never caught off guard by your suffering. For it's I that have allowed you to face this trial. It is my hand that's moved in your life. But if you will hold on to me, saith the Lord, if you will trust me with all of your heart, I will close the hedge again. And I will restore to you in a mighty way, saith the Lord. Put your hands and honor the Spirit of God in this house. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Him tonight, saints. What a mighty God we serve. We know that God can do anything. We know his power and we know his word. Every one of us are witnesses to the mighty hand of God. I've seen God do things that I knew that only God could do. I knew that if God didn't do it, it would never be. But I've seen him do things that I knew it was God. You know, sometimes God puts us in places uh, where it's impossible with me. And uh, where that woman with the issue of blood, there was nowhere else to go. She'd been to the greatest doctors of that day. Uh, amen. But it, God let her continue in that place uh, uh, to finally show her uh, that what men cannot do, uh, God is able to do. Uh, when men fall short, uh, that's when God starts to do uh, his greatest work in our lives. Uh, when men come to the end of it uh, and say, we don't know what to do, uh, we don't know how to do it, uh, that's when God will arise uh, and prove to us uh, that he is God, uh, that he is great uh, and that he can do uh, the impossible in our lives. We know God can do anything. Anybody believe that tonight? Anybody believe there's something that God can't do? I'd love for you to show it to me and tell me how God can't do it. I believe what I read in that book. I believe that God is able to do anything, Sister Darlene. There's nothing impossible with God. Brother Matthew shared a story with me at lunchtime today. Uh, I won't go into details, but a, a miracle that God worked. Uh, that the doctor saw something. Uh, Going to have to do some procedures and surgeries. Uh, and when they looked again, nothing's there. Uh, I'm telling you, doctors can't do that. Uh, I said doctors can't do that. Uh, but God can. Uh, and God does. Uh, and God will. Uh, let the story of Job. Uh, don't focus on what the devil done to Job. Uh, but focus on what God did for Job. Uh, God brought him through. I said God uh, brought him safely through. Uh, he said, when it's all done, done and said, I'm going to come forth shining like pure gold. Somebody praise him tonight. Hallelujah to God. 
Don't focus on what the devil done to Job. But rather focus on what God, how God brought Job through. And know that God's going to do the same thing for you. God is a faithful God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. If you have to write it on a notepad, put it on a notepad where you can see it throughout the day. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Look at it when you get up first thing in the morning. But God is faithful. Hey Amen. Let the devil bring his worst. But God is faithful. Hey Amen. May lose everything. But God is faithful. My mom's dealing with sickness in her body. But God is faithful. Some of you are going through hard trials right now. Dealing with things out there in that world. But God is faithful. I want to say it to you tonight. You can't trust me and uh, you can't trust the doctor uh, you can't trust the banker or the lawyer uh, they can fail you and they will uh, but you can always uh, put your trust uh, in a God uh, who is a faithful God Woo. hallelujah but God is faithful sister Angela God is faithful who will not allow you to suffer and to be tempted above that ye are able. In other words, he's not going to put one more ounce on you than what you can handle, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. God always has a plan. I don't always know the plan. I don't always have a plan. But I know how to go to the one that has the plan. He always has a door of escape. Sometimes it looks like there's no door there and suddenly there it is, wide open. Suddenly the, the out is there. Amen. God always has a plan. God's always moving. God's moving right now. It don't always feel like he's moving. I, that's why I don't live by how I feel. I, I live by faith in God. Four times the Bible exhorts us, the just I shall live by faith. You got to trust him through it all. And the good news is you can trust him through it all. No matter what happens, God's going to be faithful to us. No matter what comes, listen to me, friend. We've got to have roots that run deep in him. Uh, that says uh, no matter the storms, the trials, the difficulties, uh, none of these things are going to move me. Uh, I'm not going to be shaken. Uh, I'm not going to be tossed to and fro. Uh, I'm going to hold on to God. God's going to hold on to me. Uh, and everything's going to work out uh, for the good of those that love God uh, and are called according to his purpose. Can you say amen tonight? You may not know the way out. But you trust in him to lead you safely out. Just like he did for Job. God's going to bring you safely through. Can you say amen? When the trials of life come our way. And they're going to. We're going to face trials. Matter of fact. The stronger your faith. The greater the trials are going to be. I said the stronger your faith is in God. The more severe the trials that are going to face. You're going to deal with. But I've got to learn to trust in him. That no matter what, I'm going to hold on to his unchanging hand. And when it's all said and done, listen, you may suffer here for a season. But when that trumpet sounds, you and that suffering are going to separate ways. You may suffer for a season in this life. But the moment that trumpet sounds, you're going to say goodbye to the suffering. You're going to say goodbye to the sorrow. I've never been in that place so severe, not saying that I won't in my life. I, I may come to a point in my life that I say, I, I wish my mother would never give birth to me. I was a beautiful baby boy, uh, 8 pounds, 10 ounces, 8 pounds, 11 ounces, something like that. Uh, 8 pounds, 10 ounces. I was a fat little baby. I had black hair when I was born. I, short time later, it turned blonde. A little while after that, it turned brown. I, and then today, it turned loose. Amen. Nevertheless, 
I've never been to a place where I said, I wish my mama never had me. I don't know that I won't come to that in my experience with God. I don't know there might come a day trial so severe in my life uh, that I would say I, I wish I'd never been born. Uh, been better to me to never have breathed a breath of life on this earth. Uh, but I can tell you this. Uh, if it happens, if it comes, uh, one thing I'm going to know for sure uh, that God's going to be there uh, and God's going to be faithful, Brother Scott. Uh, and he's not going to put more on me uh, than what I can endure. Uh, and if I will endure till the end I'm going to be saved I'm going to be raptured I'm going to say to that suffering and sorrow you may have a hold of me right now but in just a little while I'm going to say goodbye to you heaven's going to be my home and you cannot come with me where I'm going somebody praise him and thank him You cannot come with me. You may be squeezing on my life real hard right now. But soon and very soon you're going to turn loose. And you cannot follow me home. You cannot go where I'm going. The word of God is still sure. You can always count on the Lord to do exactly what his word says he's going to do. When you read this book, don't just read it, but believe it. Believe it. Trust what his word says. I don't care what the devil says. The devil will always tell you something contrary to this book. He'll mix a little truth with lies. He told Eve he didn't, he mixed, he used God's word against her, but then he twisted it. He used God's word against Jesus there in that wilderness when he is tempted of the devil and there fasting and hungry. Satan came to him and against him and used the word of God against him, but Satan twisted it. And made it a lie. So don't listen to the lies of the devil. He won't never tell you the truth out of this book. But do more than read this book. Believe it when you read it. Trust this book. When it's all said and done, this is going to be the only thing we've got. <laughs> I said when it's all said and done, friend, everything else is going to melt away. This world's going to pass away and the lust thereof. This is the only thing that's going to stand the test of time. This is the only thing that's eternal. If you'll build your life on this and build your life around this, it'll stand with you when the world's on fire. If you can believe this book, it'll bring you through every sore trial that you're going to face in this life. It brought Job through. Job said, even if these old skin worms destroy this old body, yet in my flesh, I'm going to see the Lord you and I are going to make it safely through to the other side the Lord is promised so hold on to God's unchanging hand instead of listening to the lies of the devil come on sister get ready to play softly those lies are meant to destroy your faith they're meant to cause you to not believe God's word to not trust God, to get you to doubt what he says in that book. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we're not in the flesh, we're in the spirit. And we trust the Lord by faith. You can count on God to do exactly what his word says he's going to do. The Bible tells us in closing, at the end of Job's attack of his faith, God didn't forget Job. Right. God hadn't forgotten you, child of God. He knows exactly where you are. Right. Sometimes it feels like we don't even know where we are. We get so overwhelmed with things. Mm -hmm. It's hard to make out one day from the next because it all seems to run together. Mm -hmm. But God always knows where we are. Mm -hmm. He knows every step that we take. Mm -hmm. He knows our down settings and our uprisings. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're going to be there. That doesn't mean David's not saying there if I go to hell because God's presence is not in hell. David said, if I make my bed in hell, what he's saying, if things get so bad in my life that it feels like hell here on this earth, mm -hmm. you know where I'm at. You're going to be there. If it seems so severe in life, 
that I feel like I've made my bed in such a horrible place and I cannot get up. Mm -hmm. I can't get out of this place. You know where I'm at. That's right. You know the steps that I take. Mm -hmm. God knows exactly where we are. Yes. His promises are true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to tell that devil you're a liar. Get away from me. Sometimes you just got to show him the door and tell him to get out of my house, mm -hmm. get out of my car, mm -hmm. get out of my mind, mm -hmm. get away from my family. I'm not listening to your lies anymore. I'm sick of hearing your mouth. I'm going to trust God. Right. I'm going to believe God. Mm -hmm. The Bible said when it was all said and done, most commentators believe that the trial of Job went on for a year or better. Man suffered immeasurably. Mm -hmm. Unlike anybody else you read about in the Word of God, other than Jesus Christ, his suffering at Calvary, Job suffered mm -hmm. in an in a inhumane way. You know why? Because the devil don't care about you. The devil wants to hurt you every way that he can. He don't love you. I don't know why we treat him like a friend sometimes. He doesn't love us. Right. He hates us. Right. He wants to inflict pain upon us. Mm -hmm. But when it's all said and done and God brought the hedge back around Job's life, this is what the Bible said in Job 42 and 12. Mm -hmm. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job mm -hmm. more than his beginning. That's right. God gave him back twice what the devil thought he took away. Mm -hmm. And Job came out like he said, mm -hmm. when it's all said and done, honey, I'm going to come forth shining like gold. That's right. And so he did. And here we are, thousands of years later, mm -hmm. preaching about the trial of Job and the trust that Job had in God right. and God's faithfulness to keep his people safely through every trial of this life. Will you stand all over this house, please? God proved himself to Job. Even his own friends come to Job and said, you're a sinner, Job. The reason you're suffering the way that you are is because you're sinning. You would think in a time of suffering that the friends would be there to lift you up. I mean, if you can't count on them, who can you count on? That's what you think, right? But yet his friends sat in front of him and pointed their fingers down his, in his face and said, you're a sinner, Job. You've wronged God. This is why you're going through this. Don't you love people like that? You've got to love them. But you ain't got to love their ways. You go through an affliction. It's because you're a sinner. Because you're wrong. Maybe some people do go through things because they're wrong. But if you're a child of God and you know your heart's clean and your heart's pure before God and you're going through affliction, you need to stop those voices. Get them voices out of your head. Get away from them voices. And just hide yourself in the Word of God. And know that God's going to tell you right. God's going to see you safely through. He told those disciples in Mark chapter 4, He said, boys, get on board the ship. We're going to the other side. I've got work to do over there. I've got a widow woman I've got to help. A woman with the issue of blood, rather. I've got to help her. I've got a, a man who's about to lose his 12-year-old daughter to death, Jairus. I've got to help him. There's a demoniac over there living in the land of Gadara. I've got to go help him and deliver him. We're going safe to the other side. We're going across this Sea of Galilee. Jesus was so tired from ministry. He was fast asleep in the hinder part of the ship when the great storm arose commentators and I personally believe it too I don't believe it was a storm that was created by the atmosphere cold air meeting warm air and that, 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 that sea of Galilee was notorious for those storms that would come up quickly but I, I believe it was a storm caused by the devil trying to destroy the son of God the devil didn't rejoice when Jesus was crucified he done everything to keep him from that cross he tried to kill him when he was born he tried to push him off a cliff. He didn't want him to go to that cross uh, because he knew what was going to happen if Jesus made it to that cross uh, and died for our sins. Uh, we were going to be redeemed. I believe the devil brought that storm trying to kill Jesus. Those disciples, they tried to save their own life. 
you might as well stop trying to save yourself. You can't do it. You can't help your own self. Only God can. Finally, somebody got enough sense and said, go wake up the master. Go get him up. We can't do anything, but we know he can. Jesus said, peace, be still in the storm. Lay down. And he said to those disciples, where's your faith? Why is it that you're so afraid? They heard what he said. We're going to the other side. There ain't not enough devils in hell going to keep Jesus from doing what he said he's going to do. If he said we're going to the other side, uh, if he said we're going to heaven, uh, as long as you stay on board that ship with him uh, and he's on board your vessel, uh, you're going to come through every test and trial uh, and heaven's going to be your home. So cheer up, child of God. Live your life by faith and trust in him through it all. He's a God that cannot fail. He's not a God that might fail. Possibility of failure. He's a God who is faithful and he cannot fail us. Can you give him a hand of praise tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah to God. He's going to heal my mother's body. You can mark that down in your black book, your green book, your brown book. You can mark it down. God's going to heal her body. Anybody believe that? <laughs> Woo! God's going to heal her. I don't know when it's going to be. I told her here just this week or last week. I don't know when it's going to be, how it's going to happen. But I know that it's going to happen. I know that I know that I know. God's going to heal that woman. Amen. Hey, but she's going to serve him while she's here. She, gonna serve. she was serving him before she got sick. She's been serving him through this storm. And she's going to serve him when she comes out like cold on the other side. Lord God, have mercy. Why? Because God is a faithful God. Raise your hands and glorify him tonight. <laughs> Woo! God's going to work all of, that, all of this out, Sister Angela. Don't you be afraid. Don't you fear. Stand up, Sister, right there where you are. You was living for God before this ever happened. You're living for God while it's going on, while you're in this trial. And you're going to be there standing huh, when God brings you out on the other side. Huh, you listen to what I'm telling you here tonight. Huh, he's going to restore to you huh, just like the man with the withered hand. Huh, when he pulled that hand back huh, and he was restored, huh, it was though it had never been withered to begin with. Huh, when it's all said and done, huh, it's going to seem like huh, that it never really happened in your life. Huh, why? Because God huh, is a faithful God. I said, God huh, is a faithful for God. Trust in me with all your heart, saith the Lord. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your savior. I am your Lord. I am your source of help. So trust in me, saith the Lord. Praise your hands and glorify him. Woo! Glorify him. Glorify him. Glorify Him. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. Sister Angela was living her life for the Lord before this trial came. She's still living her life for God during this trial. And she's going to be living her life for Him when she comes out on the other side shining like gold. I believe it with everything within me because I believe that book. You believe that book. 
I want you tonight to come. If you have a need, I want you to come. If you're going through a trial, I want you to come. If you've got things that you need God, you know you need God to help you with, I want you to come and let's stay holy. I want some of you others to gather in around these saints of God. I want somebody to pray for my mama tonight. I want some of you to gather in behind these precious people. And I want you to pray the prayer of faith. Because you believe God. They believe God. You believe God.